Good evening. Uh, I'm sorry you weren't able to join us this evening, but I appreciate you taking the time to watch our video. And if you'd like to learn about our campaign or get more involved, you can visit my website at kirstencinema.com. That's K-Y-R-S-T-E-N-S-I-N-E-M-A.com. And read more about my ideas and, and uh, our vision for a better Arizona. And we invite you to contact the office if you have any questions or would like to meet. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Muhammad. I really appreciate it. I want to take just a moment before I get started and just say my great thanks to Hassan and his wife and his family for opening their home this evening, for making the incredible food. I'm very excited about the tabbouleh uh, and the spinach pie. I'm very excited. Um, and to all of you, to thank you, all of you, for being here this evening. I know there are so many demands on your time. And to take several hours to come join us here to talk about politics. Um, and, and more than that, I think, to talk about the future of our state and our country means a lot to me that you would take the time to do that. So thank you all for being here. I also want to take just a moment and recognize two of my friends who are special guests here this evening who will soon join the state legislature where I was honored to serve for six years. And that's Corey Harris and Darren Fisher. You know, these guys are out working hard every single day to talk to voters in this community about the choices that we face in this election. And the choices couldn't be clear between them and their opponents about a vision for our state and a vision for the future. So I encourage you later to make sure you spend some time talking to them. Their literature is at the front. And uh, make sure that you understand how important their work is at the state level. You know, I worked for seven years in the state legislature, and I survived. So I, I, no, I, when I left, I thought they'd give me an award or something. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, the state legislature, as you know, is a very, very difficult and sometimes a hostile place. And the way to make it uh, a more open and accessible and welcoming institution is to elect more people who are open and welcoming. And uh, we are in great need of more leaders like that here in Arizona. As Mohammed mentioned, I've got a long history, both with Mohammed and members of the community. Uh, when I was elected to the state legislature, um, each day we start with a ceremonial prayer. And each member of the legislature gets to take a turn. And so when it was my turn, I always sought to reach out to members of faith communities that were not often represented at the state legislature. So as Muhammad mentioned, I um, was lucky enough to have uh, a young imam who came and offered a prayer. I also invited members of the Jewish community to come and offer prayers. And, um, had a, a Tibetan uh, Buddhist monk come and offer a prayer one day. That was just beautiful. And um, even had a member of the Sufi community come and offer prayer. And my, my purpose over those years was to make sure that people who watched the state legislature, who visited the state legislature, knew that it was a place that was open and welcoming for all communities, regardless of their faith and regardless of the faith of those individuals who happened to serve. Um, so I hope, and I know, that when these gentlemen are elected, they'll continue on that tradition and uh, continue to make it an open and welcoming place. Um, so as Mohammed mentioned, I'm running for the United States Congress. What I want to do this evening is talk for a few minutes about why I would do something so unreasonable <laughs> as run for the United States Congress. I do understand that it is not normal to run for Congress. I mean, this is a Congress that has been stellarly unsuccessful. They've gone for two years without passing a single jobs bill to make it easier for Americans to get access to good paying jobs. And they've spent most of their time bickering and fighting with each other on national news. And they spent virtually no time coming together to solve problems and put Arizona families and American families first. And literally just a handful of hours before global economic collapse, you know, we were right there on the verge. And it was right before then that the Congress agreed to a compromise and move forward. And I felt very disappointed and frustrated that the leaders of our country were willing to take it to the very edge before solving problems and causing great stress throughout the world about the future of, of America's global economic strength. And I felt like we needed leaders who were willing to put aside politics and who were more interested in solving our country's problems, in meeting those challenges, than in having a a spot on Fox News or MSNBC. And that's why I decided to run. Because I've got a history of actually solving problems and working across the aisle to take care of the challenges that we face as a state. Uh, Mohammed mentioned that briefly, but um, I'll talk about where that came from. You know, I, I served for seven years in the state legislature. And during that time, 
learn to work across the aisle and solve problems and get along with people. And I learned to do that because I care very deeply about folks in Arizona having an opportunity to live a strong, healthy, <coughs> middle-class life. And that's very important to me because my own family struggled hard to make it to the middle class. All of us here tonight probably know people who are struggling just to make it day by day. When I was young, my family struggled. Um, I was born and raised in Tucson, Arizona, the southern part of the state. Um, and when I was little, my father, who was an attorney, was you know, quite well educated, good man, had a good job. Uh, my mother chose to stay at home and raise us children. Um, she didn't work outside the home. She didn't actually go to college. She just focused on taking care of us. And during the 1980s, uh, some of you may recall, we had a recession, a very bad recession here in Arizona. And my father was laid off from work during that time. And like many families that we know, when someone in the family loses, the jo loses their job, you can lose everything. And my family very quickly lost our car and lost our house. And, and we went from being a middle class family to being homeless almost overnight. It was very quickly how, how it happened. And for two years, while my parents were struggling to get back on their feet, uh, my family was homeless. We lived in an old gas station that had been abandoned. Uh, we didn't have running water. We didn't have electricity. And sometimes, even though we had help from family and friends and my parents' church, sometimes we didn't have enough food to eat. And my family was lucky, even with those challenges. Because after just two years, we got back on our feet. And we were OK again. And I realized that my family was quite lucky that we were able to recover and get back on track. But there were many other families who, through no fault of their own, can't get enough work to take care of their kids and take care of their families. So later, when I was old enough to go to college, I chose uh, to go to college to become a social worker. And I chose social work because I wanted to help children and families who were struggling economically like my family had struggled. And uh, thanks to the government, Pell Grants, everyone, you guys all know what Pell Grants? Pell Grants are great. They help poor kids get to college. And I got a full Pell Grant. Um, I also was lucky enough to get an academic scholarship because my dad taught me to work hard and never depend on anyone to give me something for free. And so those two things together allowed me to go to college. When I finished college, I moved up to Phoenix and I chose to work in Sunny Slope. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the Sunny Slope community. It's mostly an immigrant and refugee community. And these are families who've come to Arizona to make a new life. And yet many of those families, as hardworking as they are, really struggled. And my job as a social worker was to help those families get access to the American dream, right? That's all anyone wants, to have a good job, take care of their kids, and prepare for the future. And that was my job, was to help families do that. But after about eight years, I decided I needed to do more because the things, were, things just weren't changing fast enough for families. <clears throat> families would work so hard and work two or three jobs and work night shifts and just work, work so hard and still not make it. And I thought we need to do something different to make it easier for folks to get access to that American dream. And so I ran for the legislature. And whoo, that was a whole different world. I got to the state legislature. That's when we met a number of years ago when I was at the state legislature. And I realized that in order to get things done in a government body, you have to convince other people to help you. And there are lots of people. So I started making friends with my colleagues at the state legislature, Republican and Democrat. And I learned, I learned how to make friends even with people who were very different than me. At the state legislature, that was almost everyone. It's a big group of people. Because um, we have very different views about what the world should look like and what our future should look like. But what I did over those seven years was form relationships with people and make friends with people, and then convince them to do things that they wouldn't normally do, and help me advance an agenda that protected families and made it easier for folks to get access to the American dream. So over the course of those seven years, I passed a lot of legislation that, was, that helped families. We stopped the governor and the legislature from making cuts to health care. They went back later and made those cuts. But we did stop them in, in the early days, and we helped pass legislation so that veterans who come home from serving our country can go to college right away and get access to cheap tuition. And I passed legislation to help families who were struggling to find jobs. And all that legislation was just focused on helping regular families